Just ahead, police are investigating a murder-suicide overnight in Beltsville. Plus, a local school is showing their appreciation to their teachers in a creative way. And the county animal shelter needs your help. Those stories and more, CTV News is up next. Good evening, this is CTV News for Friday, May 10th. I'm Byron Scott, thank you for joining us. Well, police are investigating what appears to be a murder-suicide in Beltsville. Police made the discovery last night at around 6.30 while conducting a welfare check on the 3600 block of Stone Hall Drive. Inside the house was 78-year-old Jai Tu and his wife, 72-year-old Lee Tu. Investigators say it appears G2 shot and killed his wife before turning the gun on himself. Both were pronounced dead at the scene. And among the bills Governor Westmore signed into law yesterday is one that paves the way to rebuild Pimlico Racetrack and transfer the track to state control. Under the law, the state can use $400 million in state bonds to rebuild the facility. Pimlico is home to the Triple Crown Preakness Race, which is this year set for May 18th. Moore says the law provides a path forward to keep the Preakness in Maryland. Under the plan, the Preakness Race will be held in Laurel Park in 2026, while the new facility is being built. And crews are expected to begin using explosive devices tomorrow night at the Key Bridge site. Officials hope it will allow them to free the dolly and push it from the incident site in the Patapsco River in the coming days. If it goes as planned, the detonations will sound like fireworks, look like puffs of smoke, and plunge pieces of the bridge that are on the ship into the water. Officials say the dolly will likely stay put for two days while crews can survey the ship. And a Maryland congressman gives his appreciation to some educators this afternoon. Steny Hoyer hosting his annual Exceptional Educators Luncheon today. The event requires recognize that as teachers and principals that work in District 5, his district, the attendees held various titles, including Teacher of the Year, Principal of the Year, or County Teacher of the Year from the Washington Post. I like to every year honor those who are perceived as being um, practicing their profession of teaching of passing along information, of teaching people how to learn, uh, we won't have uh, the success we want to have as a country. So I want to make sure they know how much we appreciate what they do. Hoyer has been hosting that event for more than 20 years. Well, Prince George's County Public Schools saluting teachers in a creative way this week with their take on the Emmy Award-winning TV show Abbott Elementary, a recognition of Teacher Appreciation Week. This post stars CTV's own Tara Jones, who has been a teacher at Flowers High for 26 years, 28 years, and is our camp summer camp director. You can catch their full lineup on the PGCPS Instagram page you're scheduling enough time to make sure you get all of your assignments done and I mean, we love Ms. Jones, but she got to stop pressing me for being late. Five, five minutes before class ends, really? Is that what we're doing today? I was out getting food. I was hungry, so a man got to eat. I know breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but an hour late for class, getting food, and didn't bring me any? Is this teacher appreciation week or what? And the county's animal shelter is nearing critical capacity with its dog population. So today through May 9th, 31st, the facility will offer free adoption and waive fees. The hope is to find new homes for the dogs. For more information and to view the many animals available for adoption, visit Prince George's Pets for Us .com. And as you reported yesterday, a big black bear is on the loose in Prince George's County. Officials say the bear was last seen yesterday morning near 38th and Longfellow Street in Hydesville. And in the past week, there have been at least three bear sightings in Montgomery County. So why are we seeing an uptick in bear sightings? It's a, a multitude of factors, to be honest. The one of the primary things is that Maryland is home to a very healthy and growing and expanding black bear population. So we have bears from the western part of the state and the surrounding uh, mid-Atlantic states that are now starting to expand more eastward. Because now in the west, a lot of these areas that the bears are already occupying are occupied by other bears. So bears need to move further distances to find an area that's not already occupied by another bear. And no, that just happens to coincide in areas where we have more people. 
So when you have more of two variables, two factors coming in contact with one another, it's much more likely that you know, people are going to see more bears because there are more bears. And Trudeau says, if you encounter a bear, don't panic, but talk in a low, calm voice. Put up both hands and walk slowly backwards. Well, gunfire shuts down on the Metro Rail Station last night. It happened just before 9 o'clock. Investigators say 39-year-old Willie Williams jumped the fair gate at the Suitland Station and allegedly pulled a handgun out of his pants as a Metro officer approached him. Police say the officer fired off a single shot. Williams was not hit and was taken into custody. The station has since reopened. And you're watching CTV News still to come. Two local organizations are teaming up to provide children with access to eye care. Stay tuned. Um, Christopher Holton. I'm very active. It was a Saturday morning. Normally I go for my normal walk. With no warning, Chris suffered a near fatal heart attack. But thankfully, Brian Buckley, a bystander, saw him collapse and rushed to help. He did this big gasp for air and then just stopped. It's like I went into autopilot. Um, it's like all that training I did back in the day around CPR just just magically came out of nowhere. Because of the CPR training that Brian received, Chris did make it and didn't die on the trail that day. CPR training provided by the American Heart Association. Looking at your hands, these two hands could save a life. Being a father, you want to be around. You want to be around for your kids. Heart disease is America's number one killer. To learn more about how the American Heart Association helps save lives, go to helpheart.org. A deadline is approaching by May of 2025. All Marylanders 18 years and older planning to travel by air must have a real ID. The Department of Motor Vehicles says the state is currently at a 95% real ID compliance rate. Now, in order to get a real ID driver license or ID card, Marylanders must create or log onto their MyMVA account and provide proof of age, identity, social security number, and Maryland residency. And Maryland Casino has generated $163 million in gaming revenue last month, but total gaming revenue from the six casinos across the state fell 6.6% from last year. Total gaming revenue from the six state casinos fell. Slot machines and table games at MGM National Harbor led the pack, generating $60, $68 million in revenue, which is down almost 10% from a year earlier. All told, casinos contributed to $70 million to the state, with the majority of it going to Maryland's Education Trust Fund. And WSSC Waters' budget for fiscal year 2025 has been unanimously approved by the Montgomery and Prince George's County Councils. The $1.8 billion budget is $197 million larger than FY24. Officials say the budget will help create jobs through clean water projects. It includes a 121 percent increase in financial assistance to those in need. And the FY 2025 package includes an 8.5 percent rate increase. The water company says the typical family of three would see a quarterly increase of $25 in their bill. And the Prevention of Blindness Society of Metropolitan Washington and the Coaching Salute Holistica are teaming up to provide free vision screening, eye exams, and eyeglasses to 100 children this weekend. The origination said the organization says they will have three doctors on hand at Riverdale Elementary School for children who lack access to eye exams. These children uh, don't have access to uh, eye exams in, for other ways, and you know it's it's there aren't that many uh, care, uh, that many providers who see small children. So teenagers, yes. But small, younger children, it, it can be hard to find someone to, to go to. And so um, there are a lot of communities that don't have that many resources. And so we're thrilled because we're focused on children to, um, to be able to bring these committed community volunteers uh, who see children. The event takes place tomorrow from 9 until 2 in the afternoon at Riverdale Elementary School, which is located at 5006 Riverdale Road in Riverdale Park. And Mother's Day weekend is here, and CTV Sydney Jackson knows all the hot spots where you can celebrate. It is Mother's Day weekend, and the DMV is blooming with events to give mothers their flowers. No matter where you are in the county or beyond, 
I've got some ideas for you and your number one girl. Now, if you're feeling a nature vibe, kick off your weekend with the Green Man Festival on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you think your favorite girl might prefer a bubbly mamosa, M Lounge Events is hosting the Soulful Sunday Mother's Day Jazz and Poetry Brunch in Bowie from 12 to 3.30 p.m. Now, some mamas might just need a good laugh. So grab a ticket to George Lopez's stand-up comedy show at the Kennedy Center. He'll be performing tonight and tomorrow night at various times. And if your mother is anything like mine, she probably just wants to kick her feet up and relax. So consider booking a last minute spa treatment at the Well Balanced by Hope Spa in Glendale and stop by their Mother's Day afternoon tea on Sunday at 1 p.m. And what DMV mama doesn't love go-go music? The Chuck Brown Band will be performing live at Shark Bar and Seafood House in Waldorf on Sunday from 7 to 11 p.m. There's an event for every mother this weekend, from nature festivals to go-go concerts to spa days, and of course, a classic brunch and mimosas. So take some time to give your mother or a mother figure her flowers this weekend. And still to come on CTV News, Simon Bugs has some UMD football news. Hey sports fans, and coming right up, some players from the Maryland softball team get recognized for their great play and a former Terps football player gets the chance to play for his hometown team. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, it's time for your Friday sports page. Beginning with some softball news, outfielder Jada McFarland, pitcher Courtney Weich, and first baseman Sidney Lewis were all named to the All Big Ten teams. McFarland, who made the All Big Ten first team, led the team in batting average, stolen bases, and hits this season. The Florida native is also third all-time in the program's history in batting average at over 30%. McFarlane was named to the All-Big Ten defensive team as well this season as she made multiple highlight-worthy catches, taking hits away from her opponents. This is the fourth consecutive season that McFarlane has earned a postseason award. White, who made the All-Big Ten second team, had a solid season with the Lady Terps also. A leader on the team's pitching staff, the Silver Spring product led the team in innings pitched as well as strikeouts with over 200. White was also top five in the Big Ten in innings pitched as well. One of White's best moments this season was during the team's matchup against Penn State, where she struck out a career-high 19 batters in the team's 2-0 win over the Nittany Lions. And lastly, Lewis, who earned all Big Ten second-team honors as well, led the team in RBIs this season with over 40. The Texas native also started all 54 games in the designated player position. Lewis finished the season hitting .295 with 23 hits and 19 RBIs in conference play. The Lady Terp season did come to a close yesterday, though, as they fell to Michigan 10-0 in the Big Ten Tournament quarterfinal. The team finished the season with a 24-30 record. Moving on to more Terp sports news, defensive back Bo Bray was a top safety prospect in his draft class. The Maryland native was mocked to be selected anywhere from the second to sixth rounds in dozens of mock drafts. Bray was not selected in the draft, but signed as an undrafted free agent to a team he has some deep history with. CNS's news is Ricky Podgorski has the story. Did you have an NFL team growing up? Yeah, the Ravens. Ravens. What would it be like to play for the Ravens? Uh, it would be, be great. 
grew up watching uh, Ed Reed and Ray Lewis and, you know, all those guys, Terrell Suggs. So, I mean, that's probably what, like, where I got my hard hitting and stuff from. Almost every athlete's dream is to go pro. But to play for your favorite team. This is my home state. This is home. Is a dream come true. I mean, I made the most of this opportunity. Obrey's football journey began in Howard County, where he played both running back and safety at River Hill High School. But it wasn't always easy for him. And I've never been like that five star coming out or that guy that starts right away or this or that. You know, I've never been a super high recruit. Braid was a three star recruit looking at schools like Virginia Tech and Michigan. It was never really in the cards to stay home, at least initially. And I never really wanted to go to Maryland, but just throughout the, you know, um, the recruiting process, I just felt like Maryland was the best place for me. So instead of trekking across state lines, Braden traveled just a few counties over, committing to the University of Maryland, joining a team with a new future under a head coach just getting started with the program. And, and so when I got here in January, I didn't know who Bo Braid was. But Coach Mike Loxley would soon learn. And I watched the film and I said, hey, this kid is a kid that we can build a foundation with because it looked like on tape that he loved playing football. Loved it and excelled at it, becoming one of the most productive players in Maryland's defense and in the Big Ten Conference. Braid was named team captain and led the Terps in tackles his junior and senior seasons. He's a guy that developed over his time here to put himself in position to hear his name called. And that was exactly Braid's goal, to hear his name called. ESPN ranked Braid as a top 10 safety in the 2024 NFL Draft. But as the NFL Draft rounds passed by, so did the teams that passed him up. Bo Braid was not selected in the NFL Draft. I'm just, you know, trying to be great. I'm trying to be the best I can be. And as fate or luck would have it. Once again, Bo Braid is staying home. He signed with the Baltimore Ravens as an undrafted free agent, joining the team he's followed his entire life. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be great, especially all the people that can come watch me play and put on that Ravens uniform and, you know, I know Ravens ball. You know. But this time, he's focused on more than just winning games. He's focused on winning over that group of people he himself once belonged to, those dedicated Ravens fans. Oh. I hope it make you all proud. Ricky Podgorski, CNS TV. Thank you, Ricky. And wrapping up sports, the Terps men's lacrosse team kicks off their NCAA tournament run this weekend. Merlin will take the field versus Princeton tomorrow at 730. And that wraps up your Friday sports page. Simon Bucks, CTV Sports. Thank you, Simon. Let's take a quick look now at our three-day weather forecast tonight, a chance of showers. So keep that umbrella handy all weekend. Saturday and Sunday, those showers continue. Both days have a high temp of 65. Monday, we'll finally get some sunshine. We'll see a high of 75 and a low of 61. And now for the community calendar, calling middle and high school musicians, the renowned famed jazz band is accepting applications. The program is designed for students who are eager to grow in the artistic expression and maintain high academic standards. The deadline to apply is May 13th. More information and registration requirements go to famemusic.org or call 301-805-5358. And that's our news for tonight. I'm Byron Scott. We'll see you on Monday. Good night.